Hello and welcome to another session on uh, physics guys and uh, we are uh, going to start a new topic today and uh, this topic is Newton's laws of motion. Now uh, so far we learned about kinematics where we learned about how things move uh, basically in terms of the description of motion in terms of their position, velocity, speed, displacement, distance, acceleration and all that. Right. So in the in the topic, which was kinematics, we were concerned only about the effect of motion. That is how motion is happening. And, uh, you know, we never cared about uh, what is the cause of that motion, actually. But in this uh, chapter, that is in Newton's laws of motion, we'll now talk about uh, how is, or why is that acceleration taking place in the first place. So as a few, as uh, you know, uh, Sir Isaac Newton was uh, the first person who actually uh, codified everything or basically he came up with a mathematical explanation to the laws of motion. He carried on with the work of uh, Galileo Galilei uh, and then he himself proposed uh, three laws of motion and his very famous book called Principia Mathematica uh, was what and where all these laws are mentioned. So uh, you are aware of uh, uh, what Newton was going on, uh, going through. Basically, uh, he was amazed by the fact that why the moon is stuck uh, in the space while everything which is thrown up comes down. So that started uh, the process uh, and uh, we have heard of stories that an apple fell on his head and all those uh, 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 stories where he got inspired by that event and all that. But we are not uh, very sure whether that event took place. But definitely he came up with a very good book at a very early stage of his life, very early age actually. And uh, that book then revolutionized uh, many things later. In fact, uh, the Industrial Revolution, so to say, also owes uh, some bit of its existence and uh, uh, evolution uh, because of these, uh, you know, uh, the laws and the concepts which Newton gave. So anyway, so uh, before we take up the Newton's laws of motion, we must understand the concept of force. So what is force and uh, uh, how force is the uh, center point of Newton's laws of motion. So we already are aware what force is in a very general term. So you would have seen, uh, let's say, when you want to, when you get up in the morning, you open the door of your room or let's say when you close the door or uh, when you switch on the lights, then you press the uh, button on the uh, on the on the switch switch panel. Then uh, there are multiple other uh, you know uh, instances in your life, in a day to day life, where you feel that force or where you apply force or some force is being applied onto you. So, for example, uh, you all know that uh, we are getting attracted towards the Earth, and the Earth is uh, holding us uh, at the surface. So that's some force. Then when you push something, let's say you are driving uh, a cart from one point to the other point, that is a push. When you're pulling, for example, when you're playing uh, a tug of war, then you're pulling the opponent team. So that's a pull. Then, um, uh, you know, let's say the rocket launching, when the rocket is la uh, getting launched, then uh, uh, so such a heavy rocket, which is like uh, in multiple thousands of kilos, and that is being lifted from the ground so must be there must be some very huge amount of force which is required something is required to lift that right when that is what we are going to investigate in these sessions and similarly when the rocket comes back or let's say the aircraft comes back to the uh, to the earth and then it has to be slowed down or a plane while it is landing it has to be slowed down then again how does it come to rest that's again we we would like to investigate uh, let's say something freely falling from sky to the ground, rain for that matter. So rain is coming down. Why does it come down? What is attracting it uh, towards uh, the earth? And um, let's say while you're playing football, so you kick the foot football and the football uh, starts moving in one particular direction and finally you score a goal. So how does all this happen? And uh, for that, we are going to learn about force. So force is prevalent in our day-to-day -day life, all of us know. Everywhere, uh, uh, if the force uh, doesn't exist, then probably our life on earth becomes difficult. So we are going to study force. So force basically deserves some bit of attention from our side. So let's begin. So what is a, what is force? So we describe force as uh, an agent of an agent. Force is an agent. It's something. So I'm calling it an agent. 
force is an agent agent of what so you can ask an agent what kind of an agent what does it do so agent is some something or someone who's doing some activity so what is that agent this agent brings about change okay so agent of change but then you'll ask what kind of change you are talking about so we talk about change in uh change in these things so let's say it's a state of rest so in the previous chapter we talked about what is rest then we also talked about let's say you know so change of rest or state of state of uniform motion so we talked about what is uniform motion so all of you know that uh, uniform motion is when the velocity stays constant isn't it so constant velocity direction as well as magnitude of velocity must be same so i'm just writing in shorthand constant okay so constant velocity constant velocity right so these are the two in these are the states sorry this point is b isn't it and then c let's say direction okay it can change the direction of motion okay and uh, what else it can also change the shape and size is it shape and size okay so what is force force is an agent agent uh, of what agent of change change of what change of either the state of rest for example uh, rocket launching so when the rocket is you know uh, standing at the launch pad and then you lift it up that is what we so there must be some force which is required to lift it up that is we change we are changing the state of rest of the rocket then state of uniform motion let's say a, a plane was flying uh, and then it has to be uh, it has to land and then and eventually it has to stop so hence from unif the state of uniform motion gets changed get you know impacted so again that is where you need some force there as well direction of motion so let's say a uh, uh, rain fall is happening there is rain and at at the same time the wind is blowing so the rain which was falling in this direction will get impacted by the wind and hence you will see a deflection in the rainfall and this is a very common phenomena that uh, that happens so direction of motion also is changing and for that matter when you are when you are let's say encountering or you are uh, you know uh, going through a circular motion so let's say this is the uh, you know uh, this is a uh, track where you are going in circular motion so here also if you see every moment your direction of motion is changing so for that also we require some bit of force how to change the you know uh, direction of motion and then last is shape and size shape and size so you know uh, let's say if you have a balloon you uh, inflate the balloon so from no size it occupies some space so you can say that the balloon has occupied some space if you are let's say uh, uh you, you know uh, you are baking some bread then you are kneading the dough so there also you are changing the shape and size of uh, uh, the dough so hence force is all required for all these activities so this is about force so hence now i i believe you uh, you understood what force is so force is basically an agent of change change of what so either of state of rest state of uniform motion of direction of motion or shape and size of the object we'll take everything one by one now now just to add here this these things are called or let's say these attributes which i have mentioned as point a b c and d they actually together are called state of inertia inertia state of inertia so inertia is of you know so inertia could be of multiple things but generally speaking so inertia of let's say uh, for that matter what is the you know how does this word or what does this word mean so inert you might have must have heard of this word inert inert means something which is not reactive so inert metal uh, you would have heard of in ele inert elements and all that in chemistry so basically inertia is resistance the meaning is resistance to change okay resistance to change so something which resists changing change has inertia into so for example inertia of, of inertia can be of multiple varieties so for example inertia of rest meaning something which is at rest 
doesn't want to be changed. For example, when you are sitting comfortably somewhere, you don't want to be moved from that place. That's your inertia of, you know, rest. So you don't want to be displaced. Inertia of uniform motion, something is, you know, happily moving in one particular direction. For example, a train which is moving on a track at a, you know, uniform, let's say, uh, motion at a constant velocity. Then to, uh, to, to bring it to a halt, you need to, right, apply brakes. So hence, if until and unless the brakes are applied, the train is going to continue with its uniform motion. So it has that inertia, that resistance to come to a halt. So hence we say that is the risk, that is inertia of motion, right? Now, similarly, there, there will be inertia of direction of motion as well. So no one wants to change its direction of motion until, you know, some external agent acts on it. So something, let's say water is flowing. So let's say if there is river, there is river which is flowing down. Right. So it will continue to move in one particular direction until, let's say, you create a dam and then stop the motion or you create a channel or a distributary and and, you know, allow the water to, you know, or force the water or, you know, uh, compel the water to go in one particular direction. So hence you require some kind of a force. So hence, let's say if you are designing some kind of, a, you know, uh, embankment such that water comes and strikes this and then changes the direction. Okay, so uh, that's that's again, you know, so un until this embankment is there, water will not flow in that direction. So that's, we say that water has inertia to change its direction of motion. Similarly, you will try to change the, you know, uh, ev if you try to, uh, you know, change the shape of anything or the size of anything, inertia, you will have to do some activity or some, some work on it, isn't it? you will not be able to see something changing its shape on its own. That's what we say that everything will have a resistance to change. For example, uh, you have, let's say, uh, uh, a vegetable, potato, tomato, something like that, and you want to cut it into small pieces. Then you have to, you know, use your you know knife and apply some pressure on the knife to cut it, right? So hence, basically, the, the vegetable we are cutting is resisting or, you know, offering some resistance to change. Hence, you would you would realize or you would have realized uh, that you know every now and then if the knife becomes blunt then you have to exert more force to chop the same vegetable right so all these are somewhere indicating that everything in this universe has some inertia or resistance uh you know so whatever state it is in whether it is of rest or uniform motion or moving in one particular direction or having one fixed shape it will try inherently to resist any change uh, being caused onto that. So that's what is called state of inertia. So I hope you understood this word inertia and uh, the entire dynamics which we are going to study now, Newton's laws and, you know, and its implications and applications. This inertia is going to, you know, pay, uh, we have to pay a lot of importance or attention to this concept of inertia. So everywhere, whenever force is being applied, it is going to change one of the state elements of the state of inertia. And that's how we need to understand uh, how, uh, how Newton's laws came into being describing and, uh, you know, the state of inertia of various objects and hence how we can derive some results from that. So that's what will be the, you know, the next set of discussions which we are going to do. I hope you understood it. In the next session, let's take up some examples where we talk about how force is changing the state of rest, state of uniform motion, state of direction of motion, and shape and size.